What is real? Is it real or is it bullshit? Well, it's a little bit of both. The concept of real comes from a popular novel which was released in the late 19th century called Brill, The Power of the Coming Race. Now, during this time, esoteric studies in the West were in their infancy. And I mean popular studies, because there's always been witchcraft. There's always been deeply occulted practices within the Germanic tradition, the Greek tradition, and they've been preserved in cults that you've never heard of. But when we talk about popular expressions of the esoteric, such as the writings of Blavatsky, the late 19th century, early 20th century, this was a time period where there was a lot of confusion regarding the origin of things. And the dialogue between the Western scholars of the esoteric and the East had not been developed to its grandest potential, as has now occurred. So, there were many concepts that were expressed by Western esotericists, which now, in hindsight, seem like juvenile attempts at accessing the depth and beauty of the Eastern tradition. Vril is perhaps the greatest example of this, because what is expressed with the concept of real is a retarded form of Indian prana. Vril is, of course, a concept that is, by its very nature, rooted in fantasy. It was expressed in a book that was intended to be a fictional account of an idea that has, of course, some significance, but it is nonetheless a fictional account. It's as if in our contemporary age, esotericists began to look at the works of George Lucas, Star Wars, and say, the Force and the tradition of the Jedi explains all. There must be some deeper esoteric tradition. The Jedi are real. The Force is real. Well, of course we can say that the Force has an essence of reality to it because it's touching upon perennial truth. That being prana. But if you have the choice between embracing Star Wars as the foundation of your esoteric practice, or Indian Tantra, which has thousands of years of development, experimental and experiential development in a rich tradition of mythology that far eclipses that expressed by Star Wars. The choice is clear. You would embrace the idea of prana over the force. You would embrace the idea of prana over real. See, in the West, there was a grand disconnect between the foundations of the racial experience of consciousness and modern attempts to access those expressions. What was this disconnect? It was the spread of the Jewish tradition in the form of Christianity. This destroyed the mythological foundation of the West. And of course, there is blood memory, blood karma, that draws Western man back to those perennial truths, back to prana. But because of the lack of dialogue between the West and the East in the late 19th century and early 20th century, we have the expression of real, or in the United States, we have the expression of the force and the tradition of the Jedi, instead of prana and the tradition of the yogi. So what's the problem with embracing the concept of real over 
prana. Well, like I said, the concept of prana in the Indian tradition was refined, developed over thousands of years of practice. Vril is based upon the musings of race nationalists who are basing all of their ideas on traditions that are rooted in books and a lot of happy guesswork. And this is not enough because yes, there is value in books, there is value in artistic expression, but you have to apply the fundamental concepts in practice. This is what we do in yoga. Yoga includes pranayama. Pranayama is a practice where we access prana and we utilize it willfully. We direct prana. This is what is being attempted by the real cults, but because they are limited by their vulgar racism, oftentimes, they will not look to the Indian tradition as an influence on the way that they navigate their energy centers. And this is a major problem because the Indian tradition was not interfered with by the Jewish tradition in the same way that the Germanic tradition or the Greek tradition experienced interference. So, whether or not you agree with Hinduism, and I don't agree with Hinduism because I see it as a degeneration, whether or not you are repulsed by the fact that the Dravidian population overtook the Indo-Aryan population within India, the fact of the matter is that the Dravidian Indians did a better job of defending their traditions against the onslaught of the Jewish tradition than the Europeans. The Europeans did not fight as viciously as the Indians did to resist the march of the Jewish tradition across the globe. And so we must look to the Indians, we must look to the East for real answers concerning the nature of Vril. Because Vril does touch upon a perennial truth. As I said, this is a reference to prana. Prana simply means energy. It's the energy system within the body. We take in prana, and when we expel prana, it's apana, expulsion of energy, taking in of energy. And within Tantra Yoga, there are very sophisticated systems for learning how to direct prana in many different ways. And there are many different forms of prana, not just semen, which is one of the confusions that has developed in the Vril cult. I'm not saying everyone who embraces the concept of Vril associates it explicitly with semen, but this is a common interpretation. Now within the Indian tradition we recognize, yes, semen is a form of prana, but so is air, so is water, blood, the electrical uh, pulse through your body, which in fact was the original intention of the Vril novel to express the idea of an electrical pulse that spreads through the body. And this is more in alignment with the Anahata and the heart than with the Uladhara and semen. But, of course, the European tradition, the Western tradition, lacks the sophistication that we find in the East. And so their vocabulary is limited. The conceptualization is limited. The practice itself is highly limited. I'm not saying that we should abandon the Western tradition, but any advancements that occur within the Western tradition, any advancements that occur within the Vril cult, must look to the East, must look to the practice of pranayama, must look to the Indian tradition or the Tibetan tradition. Because if you abandon those traditions, you're going to have to start from square one, and you've got thousands of years of work to do before you'll ever catch up to the Indians and Tantra.